The big news coming out of Raw Monday night was The Rock putting Cody Rhodes on notice that he is leaving, but when he comes back, whether Cody is still WWE champion or not, he's coming for him. He said, Cody, you beat Roman Reigns on night two, but I pinned you on night one. Your story with Roman Reigns is over, but our story has just begun. And he also asked Cody if he could hold his new championship. And Cody told him, sure, if you let me hold yours, right? The Rock's Brahma Bull Belt, the People's Championship. You can hold mine if you let me hold yours. The sexual tension between these two was palpable. This was Rock's way of showing Cody, you know, his, his dominance. He's the alpha male here. I'm coming for your title when I come back. And then at the very end, Rock reached into his pocket and he placed something in Cody's hand. And he told Cody, you don't even need to look in your hand to know what this is. Don't you ever break my heart again. Now, everybody has a theory about what was in Rock's hand. At first, I wasn't sure that there was anything in Rock's hand. I thought maybe it was just a symbolic gesture of some kind. But everybody has a theory about what was in Rock's hand. The more I think about it, him telling Cody, you don't even need to look in your hand to know what this is, maybe it was a lighter. Since Cody's tour bus caught fire the Thursday before WrestleMania, which is a real story. I mean, it really did catch on fire, and he thanked the Philadelphia Police, uh, or a Fire Department, rather, for uh, being on the scene, and nobody was hurt, thank God. Uh, so maybe they're giving Rock credit, or they're going to give Rock credit for trying to burn down his bus, because Cody broke his heart and stole his WrestleMania match with Roman Reigns. I don't know. Cody never showed what was in his hand. I assume when the time is right and The Rock comes back, they will tell us. So we are definitely getting The Rock one-on-one with Cody Rhodes. It's just a matter of when. It is not a matter of if. Rock came back to work a match against his cousin. That was the original idea. He was coming back, and he was going to finally work a match against Roman Reigns that they've been teasing for years and years and years. And the way things ended up working out, now he ends up getting at least three matches out of it, including the tag match they did on night one last weekend. Then a match with Cody, and then the eventual match with Roman Reigns. They fucked up, and they fell ass backwards into an even better plan. Right now, Rock is off to film a movie. That's not going to wrap up until July. So SummerSlam, it's it's possible. I don't know how likely it is, but it's possible. To me, SummerSlam is what would make the most sense. To do Rock against Cody. Meltzer in this week's Observer says Rock would prefer to work Cody in the main event of next year's WrestleMania. Now, Rock is very big on one-year builds. He did it with John Cena for both of their matches. And he would have done the same thing with Brock Lesnar for WrestleMania 30 had he not gotten hurt against Cena at 29. They were going to shoot the angle for it on Raw the next night. I don't think you wait until 41 to do Rock and Cody. I think you do it at SummerSlam and you save Rock against Roman for 41. You know, Rock's not getting any younger. And to wait another two years and say, okay, we'll do Rock and Roman at 42... I mean, look, Undertaker and Triple H and Shawn Michaels, they had like a four-year story arc at WrestleMania. It's not like it's impossible to to play the long game here and say, okay, you know what, we'll wait until 2026 and then we'll do Rock against Roman. But there's so many variables involved here between his age and his schedule. If that's the plan and, and you're setting that as the plan and then something comes up and it doesn't happen, I don't think you want to be waiting that long to do the match. Then on SmackDown, we fast forward to Friday. We had some big developments in the Bloodline story. They saved the big surprise debut for Friday instead of Monday after WrestleMania. No Roman Reigns, no Rock, but Paul Heyman was out with Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso talking about accountability and how the Tribal Chief wants accountability and they need to bring the title back to the Bloodline. Winning and losing has consequences, he said. Of course, if that were true, Solo Sokoa would have been kicked out of the Bloodline months ago. But instead, it was Solo who took out his brother Jimmy for losing to Jey Uso at WrestleMania. He should have attacked him for having such a terrible match. That should have been the reason why he was attacked. Maybe maybe it was. Maybe that was the real reason why he was uh, so violent with all those Samoan spikes. So he attacked his brother, but not before Jimmy got jumped by the debuting Tama Tonga. From Bullet Club to Bloodline, 14 years with New Japan Pro Wrestling... He finally made the jump. And you know what? For all the people who might look at this and go, man, the guy's 40 years old or 41, whatever it is, and he spent so many years, well over a decade in New Japan, and he should have he should have made the jump a lot sooner, you know, when he was a little bit younger. 
Well, I'll tell you what, it looks like he picked a hell of a time to make the jump, didn't he? I would say he nailed the timing. The timing could not have been better for him. Solo ends up killing Jimmy with a hip attack in the corner to a chair wrapped around Jimmy's neck. They left him for dead. Paul Heyman is horrified. This was not ordered by the tribal chief, he says. He goes to call Roman Reigns. Solo swipes the phone out of his hand and stomps on it. And then in the back later, Tama tells Heyman that it was by the order of the tribal chief. And Solo smiles and he walks off with him. And Heyman has no idea what the hell that means. What it means is that we are now in for a new chapter of this story. And it could not come a day too soon. Because before The Rock came back, the Bloodline story was treading water. Rock going heel breathed new life into it, but now Rock is leaving. Roman is not full time. This had to happen. They needed to shake things up and add new members if they wanted to keep this story rolling alone. We've had almost four years of the Bloodline. This fall is going to be four years of this Bloodline story. When we first saw Jay and, and Roman you know, linking up together as part of a group. Now, we move on to the Bloodline Civil War. Jacob Fought 2 has also signed with WWE. He was backstage at WrestleMania. I have been waiting for Fatu to become a free agent because he should have been part of this a long time ago. I don't think that we're going to have to wait very long to see him. I mentioned before, Jay Uso is going to be challenging Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight title. I, I assume that's going to be at Backlash. They haven't made that official yet. I could see Jacob Fatu debuting on that show as the newest addition to this new bloodline, costing Jay Uso the world title. There needs to be a way to work Jay back into the Bloodline story. He beat Jimmy at WrestleMania. This is their way of getting back at him. Fatu cost him the match. So now we've got Solo, we've got Tama, and we would have Fatu. Does that make Solo Sokoa the new tribal chief since Roman Reigns said he was next in line? I think it does, but not because Roman anointed him, because The Rock did. And what we're looking at here is going to be Roman's bloodline, ultimately, against The Rock's bloodline. To build to the eventual Rock versus Roman match. Which is why I also think that's that should be the match for 41, not 42. And that means that when Roman Reigns comes back, he's going to have to make amends with his cousin. Both of his cousins, but especially with Jey Uso. Roman is going to have to confront all of the turmoil that he himself has caused. Right? That, that's a whole plot twist in and of itself. The Usos reuniting, and then Roman reunites with them both to take on Solo, Tama, and Fatu. Where does Paul Heyman's loyalty lie in all this? Is it with the tribal chief, or is it with the final boss, right? That could be another layer to the story. All of a sudden, the bloodline has new life to it. And now they have my attention. Honestly, Jacob Fatu would make a far better tribal chief than Solo Sokoa would. That, that really should have been his role. Had he been available sooner, that would have been the perfect role for him. I don't see him as a follower. I see him as a leader himself. But Fatu and Tama tagging up would be cool since their fathers were the Islanders in WWE. I remember when they dog-napped Matilda from the British Bulldogs. CM Punk better keep them away from Larry. But this is how Roman Reigns ends up as a mega babyface, and that had to always be the plan. Once he lost the title... You know, the biggest heels eventually become the biggest baby faces. The only difference is this time he'll be over organically, and not because he was being force-fed to people against their will. And now I see Fightful is reporting that Hikuleo's deal with New Japan is set to expire in June. He's Tamatanga's half-brother. The bloodline will never end. <laughs> if you are not a fan of the bloodline, but you are in for a world of hurt. The bloodline is never going to end. Roman Reigns is going to be looking like Afa and Sika, and this storyline is still going to be going. 